Getting out from behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I get to introduce our second reader of the night, Kelly Andrews. Uh, Kelly Andrews can't stop telling strangers about her quirks as a middle schooler. Think Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers. Great show, by the way. Love Tina. She's amazing. Like how she was obsessed with Leonardo DiCaprio and has photos of herself kissing posters of his face tacked to the wall. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, she didn't get her first real kiss until she was 16. Oh, come on, don't be that hard on yourself. <laughs> yes, she knocked teeth. Now she mostly kisses real life men, though none are as good looking as Leo. I can that. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Andrews. <laughs> The song. <laughs> or the version of the song that I have. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna read, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm gonna read a few of these poems that I'm working on that are in a series called The Body is a Poem I Can't Stop Writing. And then I'll read some other stuff after that. So they all have the same title. The body is a poem I can't stop writing. Aware I would never love this body, even at conception, before the naming, I rocked too big inside the pink of my mother. First fear, unspectacular drowning, red lid of my eye falling open. I can never make myself that small again, can't get inside the skin of another for wanting too much. When he fucks me in the ass, I draw his thighs closer, the pain indistinguishable from my own hand, until the blood's let out, knees bent and barely breathing. I'm a silhouette wetted in the dark, carving out this wound. I place a mirror in the back of my throat, tie string to the corners of my mouth, a makeshift aperture. I can capture anything in the light if someone pulls me just right. So I like to get the really dirty stuff out of the way first. <laughs> Nothing else is going to be that dirty. Um, a little dirty, but not, not that bad. Okay. The body is a poem I can't stop writing. Are you naked in your bucket of water? Okay, so I forgot how to explain this. Um, so there's this great book <laughs> that um, C.A. Conrad has that he has like these like prompts in them. And so this is based off of a prompt. That's all you really need to know. Okay. The body is a poem, I can't stop writing. And then there's no crap. Are you naked in your bucket of water, Kara C. A. Conrad? No one comes to the door asking, despite my body in the lukewarm water. No one knocks or tries to peek through the double paned glass. Because I'm a poet, I watch in my nakedness the neighbors and cars, listen to a dog barking down the street. I'm aroused by my strange self sweating and ready to fuck. I've worn this body for 30 years and I keep trying to break it in. When I'm sure I'm alone, I put my clothes back on, walk to the grocery store for mint chocolate chip ice cream. Back at home, my mouth moves deliberately in the mirror as I swallow each bite lovingly. So I stood in a bucket naked and looked out the door with the window in case you guys didn't get that. <laughs> Okay, the body is a poem I can't stop writing. On Pony Island, I watch women's striped nylon suits disappear into vulvas and prickled bikini lines, silk slipping out the sides when they pull away the wet material. I draw two big breasts in the sand, round shoulders, seashell necklace. Later, she takes off her pants and all I can make out is a head above black waves. I let rock against my legs a sponge-like fear or fascination that I'll keep walking into the ocean. Just a spoonful of salt water swallowed is enough for someone who's never learned to swim. In the future, we won't need face masks, tanks, all of that. Scientists are inventing new things every day. Flower sound, teleportation, artificial hearts, etc. I could wet my hair in the night with a little more time, float backwards. I'm willing to try most everything. All right. So 
I just have a few more. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything to say about this, but I thought I should pause for a second. No more body poems. Um, or at least titled body. Failure means a drowning death. First spasms, stomach full up, and a relaxed throat where water can flow freely, spill over a lip, a metal milk can. The audience plugs their noses, cheeks puffed out, and watch the clock's little hand descend to six, then eight, then unbelief. Someone could fold themselves, restrained, and still emerge, stiff-legged with wrinkled skin. I curl your thumb and fingers to shape the letter C. Place it just under my chin. Hold here until my chest rises up. Grip on your wrist, whitening the skin, and underneath my writhing legs, the sheep bunches. Now soft, now loose my sound, and I will stretch this long neck back, let you bruise me in a new way. Um, I got like really flushed. Maybe it's because I drink my beer really fast. Um, <laughs> So the next poem I'm going to read is like really new and hasn't heard any, uh, hasn't had any comments and it's a sonnet. Larks and owls. Flying east-west, we can shorten a lifespan. View overhead of a voluminous landscape sparks psychosomatic symptoms she can't control. Her circadian period becomes an isolation chamber hung with strings of blue globe lights. Tempo of grief beating down the minutes. She rises like larks, calls cups of dead grass home. She would love you until shifting crevices quieted. An owl is slow to wake, crescendos at night but won't return her calls. Shapes behind eyes closed, and no bit of broiled tongue, delicate bone, will fill that which refuses to stop wanting. Okay, so... Are we gonna try this? Okay, yeah. So I am. Wait, can we? Can we use your speaker for this? Kelly has a poem that has a recording part. Yeah. So I have like an introduction that um, I had a really great assistant help me with and do. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're gonna play this, and then I'm gonna read the poem that I wrote based off of this. We're gonna see if this works. Yeah. Who knows? Or we could just skip it. So, I can explain more. <laughs> so it's like I got these encyclopedias. Is that or should I talk or not talk? I can't tell. Tell more. It's not playing through. So, uh, so do you want to try it off my phone and see if we can? Yeah. So I'll explain a little bit more too. So I got these encyclopedias from the 1970s that are like science and technology, and they're like a gold mine for images and weird ass articles. And so I found this article. Um, it was called Beyond Dying, and it was um, it had an interview in it of these. There's people in the 70s who were doing LSD treatments as a way to like cope with the fact that they had terminal illnesses, and then the um, doctors would like interview them afterwards. So what Sam and I read, which I don't know if you guys will really be able to hear from this phone. Hopefully, you can hear some of it. Is um, an interview between these two people, and then I just like wrote a poem off of that. Okay. What else happened during the day? I died. What was that like? Beautiful. It sounds addictive, but it was beautiful. How can that be? I don't know. I felt like I was dying. I don't know how I came back. I don't remember that. I think I called for you. Did I? What does it feel like to die? You're just like the thin air. That's it. You have no pain, no fear. Did that scare you? No, no fear at all. Very relaxed. If it's unusual, maybe it's me. I don't know, is it? What? Unusual to feel that way. That it's relaxed to die? Other people have said the same. Okay, this is Mel's. Beyond dying, like the first photograph of earth, opal drop against a velvet curtain of black. My mother combing the heft of my hair with her fingers, or yellow leaves overhead 
legs pitching the body, net tip to an upside down sky. I was thin as nothing, a revenge for years of wanting to starve myself small. Mirror, mirror of light I swayed in your warm bassinet, canopy of wisteria. Followed the feeling of no pain to a hazeled muddy lake. Couldn't see my face, but there was no fear at all.